today, decoding 60 minutes. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. So, last night, 60 Minutes broadcast their segment on the property sector and included commentary from myself. It was rather squeezed in between a segment on international fraud hitting some Australians and a tennis player. And frankly, I felt that the weighting given to the whole question of property and the future of property was probably understated. But nevertheless, at least I was represented fairly in the segment. But there are a few things I'd like to highlight. And by the way, you can get the entire show by following the link below. There were three elements that I discussed. The first was the future trajectory of home prices. And as I've said consistently now for quite some time, I'm still thinking that a fall of 20 to 30% peak to trough in Sydney and Melbourne over two to three years is my central case. The debt bomb is already too big. The fuse is running. The banks frankly just lent and lent and lent on the assumption that home prices will always go up. Martin North is a banking and housing analyst and his straight talk courts controversy. But he's unrepentant about his gloomy predictions for our housing market. Martin, the last time you spoke with 60 Minutes, you predicted in a worst case scenario that property prices across Australia could fall by as much as 40%. Looking back, do you think that was extreme? No. Um, international issues um, flowing in over the top of what's happening locally, uh, I still think that we could see 40% plus falls over two or three years. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. 20 to 30% is my best guess for a local crisis without of that international context, which would take us even into more negative territory. So, as you see, I'm still holding to my central prediction of a 20 to 30% fall peak to trough in prices in Sydney and Melbourne. Now, that's an average, of course, some will go higher, some will go lower. But if we get an international liquidity crisis, it's quite possible that prices will drop further, 40% or more. Here are my original scenarios based on the most up to date data that I've got. I'll update them in a few days. The second issue that we discussed was negative equity. And this is a big deal because essentially it means that now people have mortgages worth more than the value of their property. And as we go forward, I expect negative equity become a bigger and bigger issue. While housing prices fall, mortgages don't. And that's a problem for more than four and a half million households with a home loan. So these darker areas are where the highest number of people with negative equity live. OK, so negative equity, let's explain, is if these people in the dark blue areas in particular had to sell tomorrow, they would get less for their house than what they owe to the bank. Yeah, you'd still owe the bank if you tried to sell. And that's a big deal. More and more Australian households are now sliding into negative equity, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, where real estate has already slumped by as much as 20%. What numbers of households are we talking about with this negative equity? OK, nationally, it's 450,000 households. Oh, right? 450,000 yeah. households. Out of about the 4.75 million who have some sort of property mortgage. So close on 10%, one in 10 people. Correct. If they sold their house, would not have enough money to repay their mortgage. They have no way out. They're mortgage prisoners, they're prisoners in their property. The thing about negative equity is that it does not necessarily impact households immediately, but it acts as a break on the ability to move, refinance, and potentially a broader break on the economy. In fact, there are households both in the UK and in Ireland that even now are still in negative equity a decade after the global financial crisis. Now, the mapping that I did was quite detailed, and it shows, of course, particular areas where negative equity is a real problem. I'll update those again in the next few weeks, and I expect to see negative equity continue to grow as home prices fall. And the third issue we discussed in the context of the Opal Tower was the quality of construction of new buildings, but it's not just relating to the Opal Tower. So if you were a potential buyer, Martin, do you reckon you'd buy into the Opal Tower? No. 
I wouldn't actually buy in one of the new high-rise because I think there are too many risks on the price, on the quality of construction, and other factors too. But this is a symbol of something much broader, that we have so many properties across Australia which are being thrown up or have been thrown up with significant defects in them. I think we've built a generation of properties that frankly could become slums in 20 or 30 years, and that's a very significant issue, not just for those individuals, but for the broader economy. And my point there is that we have thrown up lots and lots of buildings very recently, relatively poor standard of building, I think, and therefore we can expect to see significant issues later to the point where the value of those properties will be considerably below what people might aspire them to be. So I've put all that together. My conclusion is that 60 Minutes did a reasonable job of representing my position, but I still think the relative weight to the question of home price trajectory relative to a tennis player or even the international scam was probably misplaced. After all, of the three, the one that is going to impact most people in Australia, either directly through falling home prices or indirectly through an economic downturn, will be related to the property sector. But there we go. That's their editorial choice. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again next time.